nice having you again my friends in this video we're going to be looking at the solution to question 5b a typical coordinate geometry question that has to do with the graph of a straight line now here in part b they're asking us they, well they they have given us the line l passes through the points s which is 6 comma 6 and the point t which is 0 comma negative 2 now here they're asking us to determine in part 1 the gradient of the line L. Okay, and that's an easy two marks. Now let, let's just make a quick note here that the gradient, gradient, I E N T, gradient is the same as M. Okay, so wherever you see M, we're speaking about the gradient. This is just a letter that we use to identify the gradient. Now here we are we have given a worded problem and we're asked to find the gradient in part one the equation of the line in part two the midpoint of the line in part three and the length of the line in part four now when you're given a worded problem and you're asked to find uh, these properties of a straight line um, simply my friends we can calculate them algebraically okay so let's go ahead and do that however before I start I'm going to identify uh, my values in my coordinates meaning uh, for the point s66 the first value that I have here in the sixth position that would be my x value so I'm just simply going to call that x subscript 1 meaning my first x value and we know that the second value here the second 6 there would be the y value so I'm going to simply call that my y subscript 1 now if you notice again my friends I have a not in my, in my in the point t at the point t rather the 0 is in the x position but now I'm going to call that my x subscript 2 and the negative 2 I'm going to call that my y subscript 2 okay so a little trick or, or a little formula used to find the gradient we can simply say the gradient which is m is equal to y subscript 2 minus y subscript 1 all over x subscript 2 minus x subscript 1 and that is equal to and we're simply going to substitute from here in so basically I'm going to look for the value that represents y subscript 2 and when I look back at the coordinates y subscript 2 here is a negative 2 so I'm going to have negative 2 and then my y my y value here my y1 here I'm going to have minus and my y1 is 6 and that is all over and I have my x subscript 2 which is a 0 minus my x subscript 1 which is a 6 okay so my friends this is really equal to I have a negative 2 and a negative 6 now when when both numbers have the same sign in front of it we should add the numbers and keep the sign so simply I'm going to say 2 plus 6 is equal to 8 okay but remember both numbers were negative numbers so I have to take the sign with it and then I'm going to put all of that above 0 minus 6 is the same as minus 6 now we know that a negative divided by a by a negative will give us a positive so I am saying f uh, 2 into 2 into 8 goes 4 times 2 into 6 goes 3 times so my answer is really 4 upon 3 okay so therefore I can make a statement now therefore m which is my gradient is equal to 4 upon 3 okay and that's my answer for part 1 okay my friends so that would be your answer for part number for part 1 rather now in part 2 they're asking us to find the equation of the line all right now when you're asked to find the equation of the line this is pretty easy again so let me just make a note part 2 and we're going to find the equation of the line here now uh, when asked to find the equation of the line we know that the general the general form or the, or the equation of a straight line it's in the form y is equal to mx plus c okay where c is the y-intercept m is the gradient and x and y is a corresponding uh, coordinate or corresponding point okay we have corresponding x and y values and, I, and I'll show you simply what I mean okay now to find the equation of the line okay if you notice we had found the gradient now what we need to do we need to use a corresponding 
x and y value so you could use the x and y value for s or for t both would work out the same okay it doesn't matter which you choose i'm going to choose the x and y values for for t now if you notice the y value for t the second value here is negative 2 so i'm going to substitute it here so i have a negative 2 here and that is equal to i already ha found my gradient which is m so my m was 4 4 upon 3 and now I'm going to simply use my x value, the, this, the corresponding x value that corresponds with the negative 2 that I use for the y, okay? So the x value is 0, so m is multiplying x, so my x is 0, and I'm going to add my intercept. Now, if you notice, my friends, I don't know my y intercept. That's what I need to find. Now, here I would have a negative 2, and that is equal to, well, 4 upon 3 times 0. Anything times 0 um, is really 0. So, 4 upon 3 times 0 is 0. So, we would be left with 0 plus c, okay? Just to write it out, just so that you can see it. And you know that 0 plus anything is itself. So, therefore, Therefore, c must be equal to negative 2. So since they asked us for the equation of the line, an equation of a straight line must always be in the form y is equal to mx plus c. So now, my friends, we can simply say then that, remember, the y is always in it, and that is equal to m is the gradient. So I'm going to take the gradient here that we found earlier. Okay, so I'm going to say y is equal to 4 upon 3, and my x, I must put back the x there, okay? So y is equal to 4 upon 3x, and the c is negative 2. So if you notice the c that is out there, we found that to be negative 2, so I'm going to place it there, negative 2. So that would be my answer, okay? That's the equation of the straight line y is equal to 4 over 3 x minus 2 now quickly in part 3 they're asking us to find the midpoint of the line segment ts all right now i'm going to show you a quick formula that we use to find the midpoint of a straight line so in part 3 the midpoint of a line and let let me make a note here a very important note really what they're asking us to find here is the midpoint of the line segment it's the coordinate of the midpoint not really the midpoint okay so i'm going to make a quick note here that we're finding the coordinate okay the coordinate that's what we really find i think they may have left that out in the question the coordinate of the midpoint okay of the midpoint that's what we're finding all right so i'm just going to simply make a quick note here let me just split the screen there so the midpoint is equal to midpoint is equal to all right let's open bracket and we're going to have our x subscript 2 plus or x subscript 1 and this is all divided by 2 comma because it's a coordinate we're finding so we have a comma y subscript 2 plus y subscript 1 and that's all over 2 and we're going to close our brackets there okay my friends so basically this would be equal to here now uh, all we're doing is to substitute is to substitute values or x2 we had a 0 there so I'm saying 0 plus my x1 which is 6 and that is all upon 2 okay and I have to open my bracket and I have a comma there now and my y2 I had a negative 2 negative 2 and my y1 I had a 6 plus 6 and that is all upon 2 okay and I'm going to close my bracket so simply we could go ahead and simplify this my friends so we could simply say open bracket 6 plus 0 we know that's 6 upon 2 comma minus 2 plus 6 we know that's a 4 because this is a negative 2 and that's all over 2 okay and we're going to have here now a 6 upon 2 that's the same as 3 comma 4 upon 2 that's the same as 2 okay so there my friends this would be our answer and if you notice carefully it's a coordinate that we have just calculated so that's what i that's why i 
I had stated earlier that it's a coordinate of the midpoint we are calculating, okay? So the coordinate of the midpoint is 3, 2, okay? Now let's move on. Let's move on. They're asking us in part 4 to find the length of the line segment TS. Now um, that's pretty easy again. Let me just pull up the screen a bit so we can have a little bit more space to work with. So let's stop there. Now the length of the line. The length of the line is the same as saying guys. Uh, oops, my pen. Let me just get a quick color here the length of the line and we're dealing with the line L okay so I can simply use that notation to determine that it's the length of the line I'm finding so the length of the line is really the square root and this is a Pythagoras um, theorem concept for those persons who have done Pythagoras theorem already all right so th what I'm saying is my x value which is the x2 minus x1 okay all squared plus open bracket y that's y2 minus y1 all squared okay that's pretty much what the Pythagoras theorem concept states all right now let's just calculate this quickly uh, remember our x2 let's just pull down the screen a bit and just do some substitution all right just to bring you up to speed x2 we had we had there is a zero so this would be equal to the square root okay x2 is zero so i'm going to place a zero here open bracket zero minus my x1 we had a six minus six and that is all squared and i'm going to add to that my y2 which is we had here to be negative two so that's minus two and that's a minus y1 which is six okay and I'm going to square that also okay so simply since we have substituted the values let's just pull this up a bit and calculate it quickly let's just pull this over so we can have a little bit more space to work with now my friends uh, this is just this is just straightforward calculations from here we have the square root okay and we have 0 minus 6 that's gonna give me a negative 6 and we're, I'm going to place that in a brackets and that's all squared plus open bracket we have a negative 2 minus um, 6 again the signs are the same so I'm going to add 2 plus 6 it will give me an 8 and that's a negative 8 because both numbers were negative and that's all squared now this is equal to the square root of 6 6 is this is 36 square means 6 negative 6 is multiplying itself two times negative 6 times negative 6 will give us a positive 36 and I'm adding to that negative 8 times negative 8 which will give me a positive 64 okay so this is really equal to 36 plus 64 that will give me 100 and the square root of 100 is equal to 10 and notice they didn't give it to they didn't give us any units so we are going to simply put units here okay we're going to put units since I didn't give us centimeters or meters we just make a note units and that's our answers uh, okay my friends and it's simp it's simply that easy feel free to ask a question if you're still not sure and we'll get back to you as soon as possible bye bye okay